Hello and welcome to another episode of Launch Legends. Today we're joined by Emric of Agora Pulse, a social media management software. Agora Pulse is doing around $14 million in annual recurring revenue, and they've got over 7,000 customers. Emric talks about how they started in 2011, but only achieved product market fit in 2016. So that's five years of hard slot working on minimum wage whilst he was trying to grow the company. He also talks about how he started building relationships with key influencers and partners long before the product was ready. Those relationships helped him tremendously in the later years. So there's a ton of value Emery provides in this interview. But before, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button, rate and review. If you're listening to this on a podcast, please rate and leave a review. Hey, Emery, thank you very much for being on the show. So Agora Pulse, I know you told me you've got around $14 million in revenue. Uh, subject to exchange rate because I know you uh, calculate everything in uh, in euros. Uh, yeah. You've got over seven thousand customers, and uh, most of the customers are coming through your inbound network. So, before we get there, just let's talk about who you are and uh, what you were doing before Agora Pulse, and why did you start the company? Yeah, so I I'm Emric Walters. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm Emric. I'm a French citizen born in New York, so I also have the US passport, which makes me a funny beast um because I'm both American and French, which is a weird mix. And uh I actually I started my career as a business law- business lawyer in 1995 so that's my background didn't last for long because I did that for 5 years and uh started my first company in 2000 with my co-founder Ben who is still my co-founder today so basically Ben and I we've started this company the company behind Agora Pulse in July of 2000 i.e. 20 years ago mm-hmm. and uh we we've, we've tried to be successful many many different times pivoting many different times as well and eventually started Agora Pulse in uh, November of 2011. So, um, Henry, sorry, I'm I'm putting you there. When you say that you were pivoting, what was the company you started in 2000? Sorry, in 2000. What did you pivot to? It was... It was a SaaS software uh, already. It was uh, social media already, but it was called Communities at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it basically, on paper, it did sound a lot like Facebook. But it was in 2000. It was in France. It was in French. So it was not a success. A lot of my friends keep telling me, you invented Facebook before Facebook. And I keep replying to them, you know, hundreds of people invented Facebook before Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, Friendster did, uh, Six Degrees, I mean, and again and again, like so many, uh, Mm -hmm. MySpace. So it's not, it's a lot of people had this idea that social networking should be a thing before it was a thing and I was one of them but it didn't work and uh, it was too early and um, we had debate with my co-founder at the time about the word social network he didn't like it I said yeah but it makes sense and uh, it doesn't mean something else da, da, da. so we were we launched that at the time where social network was not a thing and people didn't didn't agree on what it meant <laughs> so that did tell you something mm-hmm. uh, we did that until 2009 approximately and um um what we did in the meantime is we created a b2b version of it that was white labeled for brands and that's what that's what we've lived with in terms of making revenue and money uh, between 20 2001 to 2, and 2012 i would mm-hmm. say um, but um, just to give you, so basically we were customizing the affinities that was the name solution, uh, putting CSS, HTML, CSS, and mm-hmm. different codes and SSO and all that kind of stuff. So a brand could create its own community of you know passionate people about anything or bloggers or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, an American company did the same thing. They were they are called Ning. They still exist, uh, N I N G, and uh, it was create your own social network. That's what we were doing, but mm-hmm. we started that years before them. And uh, I, I like to say that uh, Mark Andreessen was behind Ning, mm-hmm. and I like to say that I was as smart as Mark Andreessen. We both failed uh, at, at creating a, a software that allowed people to create their own social networks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Um, and yeah, and, and in, in 2011, we were trying to sell this build your own social network to brands and every brand I was talking to were like, ah, nah, okay, we go on Facebook and do something there. And it was like after, after 10 meetings like that, I told my co-founder, that's it. You know, we can't fight Facebook. This thing is going to be, is going to, and it was 2008. Mm -hmm. Uh, this thing is going to take over the world. We either do something on Facebook or we give up. I'm fed up of, um, making little money. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to give you perspective, in 2011, our annual revenue was 140,000 euro. Wow. That's what I make. In, that's what I make in three days or four days right now. So, like, <laughs> and that was my annual revenue back then. So, it, it gives you an idea of you know uh, how far we've we've gone. How much from were you taking home? Uh, so, how much were you taking home at that point? You mean myself? Yeah. Nothing. And I was not taking home anything. You can't take home anything when you're making so little money. Yeah. My co-founder was getting a little because he was single and he had to. Um, you know, my wife was making some money and I had unemployment for a while and I, I did other jobs on the side. So I, I you know, I we struggled for a long time. It was um it was years and years of being minimum wage, unemployment, um, uh, side gigs. Mm -hmm. I did run companies for clients as manager for several years where I was basically running their company from Monday through Thursday and doing mine on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that, that kind of, that kind of like right. until, until we, we got somewhere with Agorapols, which was, uh, 2015. Uh, broke even, and finally I was free. <laughs> so when you when you started uh, Agora Pulse, um, let's talk about how you transitioned from your previous company to this one. Uh, how, what was the product development like? How long did that take? And how long before you actually achieved product market fit? Well, you know, you have to... Realize that when you're bootstrapped, your product is always very limited, uh, somewhat not great for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so what the product looked like in the very early days, it was a Facebook uh, contest and promotion. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we added a couple of components to reply to fake comments on the wall. That's, that's the name it had then, back then. Mm -hmm. um, get some statistics. Um, so basically, it was only Facebook. Uh, it was mostly contest and promotion because that was a big thing at the time. And um, um, you know, we 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 started making some money with that, and we had some level of growth, and we had some level of product market fit with that alone. But then we realized that churn was very high. Okay, what do we do? So churn is not too high. We we have to be because that was a point solution. Funny you mentioned that in the conversation mm -hmm. earlier. We had Facebook contest and promotion was not a system of record. It was a point solution, and no, that, no, that's not good. Mm -hmm. So we said, how do we do? How do we become a system of record? We have to be the software that a job in the company is using on a daily basis, or at least on a weekly basis. What is this? It's a social media management tool. It's a tool where they go every day to reply to post to do all that stuff uh, okay let's do that who does that so Hootsuite was doing that at the time Sprout Social was not even doing that because they were on Twitter only in 2012 if yes. my memory is correct yeah. um, Sweet was started as a Twitter only and then expanded to the other stuff and um, we said okay we need to do that so if we need to do that let's talk to people can they do that only on Facebook no they're not interested we need to have at least Twitter that was 2012 again Instagram was not a thing, uh, LinkedIn barely. And uh, so we started to add Twitter to the mix. And then we said, okay, now we have Facebook, Twitter. What do you want? And uh, they also want this and they also want that. And so in the early days when you bootstrapped, you're always, let, let's say you're 15% of where you should be to be a good, decent, uh, legitimate player in the field mm -hmm. of social media management tools, which is a system of record for social media managers or community managers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then because you're bootstrapped, uh, your, your, your dev team is very, very small. The dev team has been three people for a long time with three people between 2012 and 2013 or four, beginning of 14. So you move slow because you have very little resources and, and your product is not perfect for far from that, you know. So it's, um, I would tell you that before we had 
product market fit for a full blown social media management software. It probably was end of 2016. Wow. Something okay. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's amazing. So that means that before that, yeah. growth is slow. Yeah. Uh, it's there, but it's slow. And you lose a lot of business to big players who have raised money and stuff like that. So, and yeah, so you have to be ready to be very patient. <laughs> anyway, a couple of questions. I mean, first of all, amazing. You stuck with it for five years until you actually got real traction. That takes some... Yeah, that takes a lot of patience and you have to stick with it. Uh, so from 2011 till 2012, you figured out that, okay, this, what you had with the Facebook contest is not going to be the sustainable business. My question is that, mm. was that through customer feedback or you, you just figured out that look, this is not going to work? Look at the numbers. Yeah, we looked at the numbers. We saw the churn number and we said, there's no way this is a sustainable business. 20%. MR churn every month. Ask anybody in SaaS, they will tell you this is death. This is death row. <laughs> From 2012 to 2016, um, at that time was was that product sustainable? Where it was paying its own cost, development cost, and uh, paying you guys as well, or you were still the other person that was basically. No, we were, I was being, I paid myself minimum wage in 2012 and 13. Um, I think. Minimum wage is 1,500 euros per month uh, in France. Mm -hmm. I think I started to get a decent salary, i.e. 3,000 euros a month, which mm -hmm. is not decent in, in, my, in my two days uh, uh, scheme of things, <laughs> scale of things, <laughs> in, uh, in 2015. So in 2015, we broke even. Uh, we reached 100,000 MR uh, November 2015, uh, 2015, I remember very well. Mm -hmm. And... We we double our salary, or almost like from whatever we were to three thousand or thirty five hundred, and that we had decent money we could okay. live with. But so before from, that, not really. From two thousand and twelve till sixteen, um, let's talk about your growth. How were you driving leads? I know inbound was it working back then as well. Content, 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 and SEO was ninety percent of it. Right. And I also, um, I, I think I'm pretty good at one thing, which is building relationship and building bonds with people. So I did travel a lot to social media conferences, mm -hmm. especially in the US. And I met a lot of friends mm -hmm. uh, uh, who became very helpful. And those friends were influential. And, you know, so basically... The one thing I understood very early on when we were making, I don't know, 10,000 of MR and we're like super small and six people. And I, I, the one thing I realized is, okay, I'm, I'm nowhere. I'm a loser. I'm not making any money. My business shits. My product is shits. Like everything shit. But I need to think about in two years, my product will be much better. I'll be in a, in a different place. You know, I'll have much more to, to offer. And at that time, if I had not worked in the past two years at building a way to let the world know about that, then I'll be fucked because basically uh, I will have a good product. I will have something to offer, but I will have no way for letting the world know about it. So, and that's the most difficult thing you, you, you have to do as a founder, as an entrepreneur, is you have to work very hard during these times where you don't have a lot to offer because your product's not great. Mm -hmm. Your team's very small. You have very little means. If, you know, you're, you're, no, you're a nobody. But you still have to work. So two years down the road, and that's hard to do hard work now for two years from now. Like that's always very hard. You want to result tomorrow. No, 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 no. Work now for two, year, for two years from today. Because two years from today, you'll have a decent product. You'll have something to offer. But you need to have a, a system or way to let the world know about it. So that's why I put my but in planes, went to conferences, built relationships with influential people. And when we had enough to offer, then I reached out to them and say, hey, I've never asked you to try my software. Would you do that for me? And say, sure, of course, I'm right. Love you. I'll do that. I'll try your software. And then, oh, it's great. It's amazing. I didn't know. And then they started to write about it and make videos and talk about it. And that that helped um, a lot. But today, it's not enough. Like at the level of scale we are at today, that is not going to help. It's too small. But at the time, it was it was huge. I think just going back to it's a bit philosophical. I always say that hard work is actually not that hard, but it gets super hard when 
is that you're doing a daily slog for months and months, but you're not really getting any results. That's when it gets hard, like really hard. But so it's really interesting yeah. how you got through that really painful period and just really slog through and make sure that you got somewhere. And it's quite interesting what you said about, okay, I looked at myself in two years and uh, you started building those relationships without any return in the short term because you knew your product was going to get there eventually and you would need those relationships. So th- that's really interesting. So someone who's listening to this and is thinking, okay, is where they, they are where you were in 2012. They have a, I mean, the vision is clear, but not so super clear. There, nothing really works at that particular time. I'm sure you were there. Nothing works. Uh, there's no money. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, we can motivate them, but what's the process they should follow to get to where you are right now or where you were in 2016? Well, first of all, they have to decide if they have to stop or keep going. That's the first decision you need to make. And there's one thing you need to look at to decide if you have to keep doing, keep going or stop what you're doing. It's look at the last six months and look at the growth. Have you had growth? Have you had progress? Are things going up and to the right, even slightly? Is, do you see that curve going up and to the right month after month after month or not? If not, stop it. There is no way the next six months are going to be different than the past six, the past six months. But let me ask you so this. If you've been stagnated, yeah. Go on, sorry, you finished, John. Yeah, no, no, I said, if, if you've been stagnated, if you've put a lot of efforts into your business and full stagnation in the last six months, the next six months are going to be the same. No question. If there is a little bit of improvement, okay, there will be a little bit of improvement in the next six months. Don't expect the moon. It's going to be small, it's going to be slow, it's going to be hard, but as long as it goes up and to the right, there is hope and it can keep going. That's my first, that's my criteria to decide if I pivot, if I stop, or if I keep going. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the time in 2013, 14, we were adding a thousand euro of MR per month. I mean, as of today, it's 40 to 45, just to give you the, 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 the scale of difference, you know, like I'm much more ha- happier, I'm much happier now. Than I was then, but at the time, one thousand a month was enough to keep me motivated. That's mm-hmm. the first thing, and the second thing is again, think long term. What do you need to do today to be where you want to be next year? Because there is very little you can do today to move the needle next month. Very little, you know, like Facebook ads. Yeah, sure. Yeah, show me someone who's been successful and massively successful with very little money and a, and a so-so product with Facebook ads or Google ads or anything paid. Mm-hmm. So usually paid is not the solution. Uh, usually the solution is word of mouth, especially when you're bootstrapped. And you know, again, I'm not talking about sales-driven, highly funded company. I'm talking about you have a bootstrap business and very little means mm-hmm. and you're counting on a great product to, and people talking about it. So you need to think about what do I need to do now and next month and the month after. So in a year from now, I'm in that place I want to be at in a year. Because usually when you're bootstrapped and what you, most, most of what you're doing is organic and it's going to generate inbound um, attention, Mm-hmm. It takes a long time to build up, like content, SEO, uh, influential influencer marketing. All that stuff take a long time to build up. So you have to do now what you want to, uh, what's going to help you get where you want to be in a year. And that's very hard to. It's much harder than people think to do because, again, like we said, you said earlier, it's hard to work today for something in one year. Like, oh, I want something in one week. I want to click on Amazon and get it in tomorrow at the, on, on my front porch. You know, that's that's how we all are. Yeah. We want everything now. We want everything short term. It doesn't work that way. And you have to be in that mindset. That's okay. I'm going to work hard today. It's going to pay off in 2021. And that's fine. But at least I'm clear uh, or at least clear enough with what is needed that I should be doing now. So in one year, I will be 50%, 60% above where I am today Great. by doing uh, this and that. So I know you're rushing for some time. So one last thing. Um, from 2016 yeah. till now, did you change anything drastically or you just did did more of what you what was working before in terms of content? You always change everything drastically. What got you here won't get you there. It's 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 the the the, the single truth that you you should always live with with a business. Basically, what takes what took us from one to three didn't work from three to six. What took us from three to six didn't work from six to twelve. Mm-hmm. What took us from six to twelve is not going to take us from twelve to twenty-five. So, 
you always have to reinvent yourself because it's a matter of scale. You know, if, if basically adding 3 million of ARR in three years is great, but for in, in my, in my, in my world today, it's shit. <laughs> so if I do now what I did to go from one to three or one to four, if I do that now again and again and again, I'm just going to get three more million in, in ARR in three years, which is really, really poor, really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, now I want to get 15 million AR in three years. Mm -hmm. So you have to reinvent yourself all the time to go with the scale of what you want to achieve. Of course, if you want the scale, if you're not ambitious and you're happy with a 5 million AR and that, that's not growing, that's fine. You know, no judgment. Everybody has different ambition and, and wishes for their own lives and their own success. I'm ambitious. I want to grow bigger. I want to grow the business to a meaningful state. And meaningful for me is way, way above 14 million AR. So I we we have to keep reinventing ourselves. Go, what do we last year we added three million? What do we do to add five next year or four and a half? Like what what do we do differently? Of course, there are the basics, a great product, great support, like all these things, you have to be super good at them. Listening to a customer, understanding their real needs, even the one they don't understand themselves, and all that stuff, customer discovery, all that stuff you have to do and be, be very good at great design, great UI, UX. But all that stuff is a given. Once you have that, what do you do to be better than the crowd and the rest? And that's always different. Amber, thank you very much. Thank you for being on the show. And uh, I hope I can speak to you sometime soon. Thank you very much. My, my pleasure. Have a great one.